Merlin, I just can't resist beginning this interview by asking you what's a nice, all-pro, former L.A. Ram like you doing in show business? Well, it came uh, as a natural extension, I think, to uh, playing in Los Angeles and uh, being interested in television and having a chance, uh, fortunately, to, uh, to stay active in sports uh, while talking about it on the weekends. And it's also very exciting for me to have a chance to work with a new team on Little House in the Prairie. Did you know Michael Landon before this? I knew him, but not well. And I've uh, certainly grown to appreciate him as a director and actor and writer and, uh, and a friend uh, because of the work uh, on Little House in the Prairie. What is your role? What kind of a guy do you play? I play a friend and a neighbor. I have a family of my own. Where, uh, we work closely with uh, the Landons. I work with him in the sawmill and uh, get to do many things with him uh, as a result of that relationship. I just have to ask you also, because I think everybody would be interested to know what Merlin Olson thinks about Joe Namath with the L.A. Rams. Is that going to work out, do you think? Well, I certainly hope so. I think Joe brings a lot of uh, expertise, not only as a player, but also a tremendous knowledge of the game and also the ability to teach. And if he uh, can utilize any of those areas, uh, he'll certainly add uh, uh, great value to the Ram team this year. Do you think he can be the number one quarterback? I think it kind of depends on uh, how bad his knees are and uh, how, how much he wants to do it. And I think he wants it very much. You think he'll really give it his very best shot and he won't just sort of lope along? I'm sure he will. He's a professional and he'll be doing the very best he can. Merlin, I know that you graduated from college with summa cum laude with a BS and you have a master's degree as well. So as I sit here facing you, I suppose the worst thing anybody could do would be to make an inference about the image of the, uh, the stupid athlete or the dumb athlete or the guy with all the brawn and no brains. Are you really quite sensitive about that kind of thing when people do talk about it? I'm sensitive in, in terms of uh, seeing the stereotyped uh, uh, reference to all athletes as being uh, just creatures and animals and, and not being intelligent people because uh, in order to, to compete as athletes today in a very complex and uh, difficult kind of situation, we have to use our minds as well as, as our bodies and our backs. And, uh, it's very important that uh, an athlete be tuned in mentally to what's happening. If he's not, he's not around very long. What do you think of this mode we have now in Dallas, Dorset? I think, uh, I think he's going to do well. Uh, it'll take him some time to adjust to a new game who, uh, for competition, but he's a fine athlete and he wants to succeed. And if he can keep from getting hurt and uh, learn a very difficult system in Dallas, uh, I'm sure he'll do very well. Of course, we hear so much about that, and I'd be interested to get your opinion on it, Merlin, about the fact that Tom Landry's book is probably the most difficult one in pro football. Do you think it is? I've never read it. I certainly... <laughs> if you'd like to, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know. I think it might just confuse me, but it is a complicated system, and it, uh, as a defensive player, it was always difficult to adjust to a Dallas team because they were doing so many different things. And certainly uh, that will put added pressure on any young player uh, who has to first master what's in that book or he's not going to feel comfortable on the field. Well, Merlin, we thank you very much for talking with us today here in Hollywood and all the best of luck to you with your new career. Thank you. Nice to visit with you. Okay.